G'day, how's it going? I'm Jamie. So let's keep going with this Game Boy Advance programming in C. So we're going to build off what we had from the last tutorial, which you can grab off GitHub if you haven't kept up, or you can follow ahead with that YouTube video as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a little bit on top of that. We're going to use what we've got, and we're going to start creating the basics of a sort of bitmap rendered POM. Um, we're not going to do too much real GBA sort of specific code today. There will be a little bit of setting up VSync and we'll look at what that is. But really, we're just going to play around with what we've got to get some paddles and a ball drawing and moving around the screen. All right, so let's jump into the code. <coughs> okay, so what we've got here is the code from the previous tutorial. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hide this away. We're going to keep using it, but let's just keep it out of sight for now. So we'll just uh, pragma and region this, and we'll just call it tutorial triple zero uh, code. Right, and we'll scroll down to where that ends just before main, and we'll put in the next hash pragma and region. Quite a useful feature. Um, not exactly strictly C really, is it? But it's okay because the compiler will print out a warning, but basically ignore these because it doesn't know what they are. But it lets us minimize our code quite nice and easily with a little description of what it is. Okay, so the first things first, when we're creating Pong, we kind of want to have a ball move around the screen. It's going to start in the center, but it's going to bounce around in a random starting direction. Okay, we don't know which way we're going to go. So we're going to create a random number generator. Uh, we'll seed it with a value, so it's just the starting value is going to be 42. Okay, we can change this later on, but for now, 42 is a, a good enough number. Um, now we're going to have a function so we can seed that value and pass in any other value we want. So the default is 42. We're going to be able to pass in another signed integer to seed it with. And what we'll do is we'll store the old value. So we'll just create a variable and we're going to store our old seed value in this. And next up, what we'll do is we'll assign our seed value to that uh, GBA rand seed. Now, I've kind of gone against type here, and I know it breaks a few rules, and uh, it's not really a coding style, but I like to use double underscore on global variables. Uh, so I'm just going to do that for now. Uh, we'll change this later on to, to suit, but for now, double underscore for global variables will be fine. Um, all right, and we'll just return our old seed. Now we need to generate a random number or a, a pseudo random number as we're using the, the Game Boy hardware to do this. And we're going to use a linear congruential generator. And the values for this are taken from the numerical recipes book, um, which is also available on the Wikipedia listing for looking at linear uh, congruential generators as well. And what we're really going to do here is we're just going to go and following the formulas available on Wikipedia as well, I'll link that in the description for the video. Uh, we're just going to go, okay, so let's get our random seed. We're going to multiply it by quite a large number. And then we're going to add on some really large sort of prime value. So we've got our random seed now, okay? And we're going to return that. And here what we're basically going to do is we're going to get that and we're going to shift it down by a value of 16. We're not interested in the lower 16 bits of this number, the upper 16 bits are gonna be complex enough. And we're gonna add that with a value of seven triple F here. Now, this value that we're adding it with there is the same as doing the modulus with it in this case from the formula of Wikipedia. So that's gonna give us our random value. Next, we're gonna get a random value within a specific range. Ideally, we wanna be able to call this function and say, get me a random number between minus one and one in our case or between one and a hundred. Um, so we'll have this function to get a random between a minimum and a maximum. So we'll call our random function and we'll multiply that by our maximum value minus our minimum value to give us our range. And then we'll shift that down by 15 bits just to keep it within scope. And then we're just gonna add on whatever our minimum value is. 
So we've basically just created a random range function. So we'll go down to our main, we'll get rid of all this draw line code. And again, if you want to know more about how these random values work or these generators work, there is a Wikipedia article linked uh, in the description of this video that'll take you there. So we'll just test this random value to make sure it works. So we'll seed our rand with just a value of, uh, what's this, two, double, three, four, three. And then we'll call our random function. We'll just say random value is gonna equal GBA rand. And see what we get back. And then inside of our while loop, we'll just keep going rand value is gonna equal, and we'll call GBA rand again. Or GBA rand range this time, and we'll call it between minus 20 and 20. So we're expecting to get a value return of minus 20 and 20. So now we can run that with the debugger on and wait for it to start up. We're not gonna see anything drawn to the screen, it's just gonna be black, but we're not interested in that here. So we've hit our first breakpoint and we'll just jump through. Okay, so we'll put a breakpoint in on that line and we can check out what the value of rand val is. Okay, so it's 12 minus four, 10 minus 20, 19. Okay, so we can see it's definitely jumping between the minus 20 and 20. That's good, it's staying within range. Okay, and we just keep cycling through that while loop. So we'll stop now. Okay, we've got the gist, it works. And we'll come back and we'll just mask that away again with another pragma region uh, random generation. Okay, so hash pragma regions Kind of useful in letting us keep our code nice and clean. We want to hide it away for video recording such as this. Okay, so we'll hide that away. All right, so we've got the random value. So now we can kind of start doing the code for our ball. So we'll create a pragma region for it, uh, pong ball, and we'll end the region for it as well. And we'll put some code in here to get our ball up and running. Okay, so type dev struct ball and we'll put ball at the end there. That means we don't need to use the struct keyword when we're creating a variable of this type. And I know that goes against so many coding standards if you're really into coding with C on Linux. For here, it's useful. Um, again, it's a semantic choice. You can choose to do it or not do it. Okay, so we've got what? Our ball's gonna have an X and Y value for its current location, and it's gonna have an X and Y direction. It's gonna have a size or a radius. Uh, we're just gonna make it a square, and it's gonna have a color. Okay, so we've got that, and now we're gonna start ball. Start ball is just a function that's gonna get our ball moving in a random direction. So we're gonna make use of our random functions. Because um, obviously we're gonna have an initializer later on, but when we start the ball, we want it to have a random X direction. Um, but it's going to be inside a while loop here. It's kind of cheeky of me because we don't want our ball to have no x direction. Because if we're asking for a random value between minus one and one, which is the possible directions, minus one means it's moving left, positive one means it's moving right. If we ask for a value between minus one and one, zero is still a value we could get returned from our random number generator. We don't want that because the ball has to move left or right in Pong. So we're just going to go through a while loop and go generate me a random direction. If that direction comes back as zero, then generate another number. Hopefully we won't get lots of zeros in a row. Then we're gonna generate a random Y direction for it. Now, getting a zero in the Y direction is perfectly fine. Okay, the ball can just move straight left or straight right. Happy with that, no bother at all. Next, we'll call initialize ball. So now we'll initialize the ball. Now we've set up a start function that generated a random value. We're gonna initialize ball. So a ball will be passed to this as a pointer and then we're gonna pass in an X and a Y positional values, a size or a radius for our ball, and a color value. So then we'll come in and we'll just assign these values to the ball object pointer that was passed in. So ball X equals AX, the ball Y is gonna equal AY, the ball value for size is gonna equal the A size argument that was passed in. We're just sort of encapsulating this in a nice, neat function to initialize this ball variable with whatever's passed in. So we're trying not to access our data directly. 
here, or at least not set it directly. So we have to at least go through functions to do so. Although we can just assign it in place. It's a little neater to wrap it up into these functions. Okay, so we've assigned uh, an X and a Y to zero, and then we're just gonna call start ball. So that means when it goes in, X and Y will be equal to zero. So the first time it's gonna go through, it's gonna hit that while loop and it's gonna go, oh, okay, yep, I'll go through and I'll assign random value of minus one or one for the ball's X direction, and the same for the Y direction. Okay, so we're gonna need a function to be able to move the ball around the screen. And we'll just create a void function, move ball. It's gonna take the ball as an argument and we're gonna come in and we're just gonna go, okay, cool. Let's grab that ball and let's get its y direction. And we're just gonna move its y direction by whatever the ball's uh, y der value is, okay? That's great. And we're gonna have an if check here because with Pong, if the ball goes outside the Y or the vertical boundaries of the screen, it needs to change direction. So if it hits the top of the screen, it needs to alter its direction and start moving down the screen. Or if it hits the bottom of the screen, it needs to change direction and start moving up. So we'll have this, if ball's Y value is less than zero, uh, we'll set Y to be zero and we'll change its direction to its direction times negative one. And we'll do the same for if the ball's moved and it's gone off the top of the screen, or in this case, the GBA as it draws from top down, if it's gone off the bottom of the screen. Uh, so we'll do a test to see, hey, if the ball's height is greater than the screen height minus whatever the ball's size is, um, then we need to change direction on this one as well. So it'll be the same sort of code. We'll just go, okay, the ball's Y direction is gonna equal the screen height minus the size of the ball. Uh, so we're drawing from the upper left corner of the ball object. And yep, okay, we'll do that. And then we'll just change its y direction again. So the ball's y direction times equals minus one. And that's gonna keep the ball within the y or the vertical range of the screen. So we're gonna to need to do the same thing for the x direction. So we're gonna go, okay, so ball's x is gonna plus equals whatever our value for x ball x der is. Um, so if the ball's going left, it's going to be minus one. So we're going to add minus one to whatever the X position is. If it's going right, we're going to add one. Okay, so what's going to happen here is if the ball goes outside the bounds of the screen on the X, then technically one of the players has scored a point. So if the ball's X is less than zero or the ball's X is greater than the width of the screen, or if it's greater than the screen width minus the width of the ball or the size of the ball, then someone scored a point and we need to bring the ball back to the center. And what we're gonna do now, cause we're not really interested in scoring or anything like that at the minute, we just wanna get something moving around. We're just gonna restart the ball at the center. Okay, we're gonna set its X direction, its Y direction back to zero. Um, so yep, A ball X uh, is just gonna equal uh, the screen height, uh, or sorry, it's gonna equal the screen width divided by two. Okay, so dividing by two is the same as bit shifting down by one. Okay, so we're gonna go right, the ball's back in the middle of the screen, uh, minus the width of the ball as well. So we're gonna put it, so it's the center of the ball will be right in the center of the screen. And we'll do that for the Y value for the ball as well. Cool, so we'll just copy that line, change X to Y, change width to height. And that's good. Okay, so then we've moved it back to the center of the screen. We'll set its X direction and Y direction back to zero. So there you go, you're back to zero. And we'll call start ball again after this. And we'll just say, right, start the ball. And it'll choose a random direction for the ball to start in again. Bro. Okay, so now we need a function to be able to draw the ball. Now, the drawing code's already been done. That's what we had from last week. We were able to draw rectangles, etc. So we're just gonna go through that. It'll take a ball as an argument, and we're gonna call draw rect, and we'll pass in the ball's position. So we'll pass in its x position, we'll pass in its y position, and we'll send through the ball's size in both the x and the y, 
and we'll give it a color value for today. We'll just say our ball's gonna be completely white. Okay, so now down in main, uh, we can get rid of this ran value we were testing before. We don't need ran val there for now. Uh, we can keep the seed, that doesn't really matter. Let's just seed our random with that number. So we're gonna create a ball. Okay, so we've got a ball object there. And we'll initialize it to some value. So we'll initialize it to the center of the screen. And here we're passing it through as a, a reference or a pointer, sorry. Uh, C doesn't do referencing. So we're gonna pass it in as a pointer and we're just gonna say it's gonna be at half the width of the screen, half the height of the screen. We're gonna give it a size of 10 and we're gonna set the color to white. So values of 31 all around, that'll give us a white ball in the middle of the screen. And then in this while loop, uh, we'll get rid of that random uh, value there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the ball to move and we'll move it by, we'll have the move function move it. And then we're gonna tell the ball to draw. So we're gonna have a ball moving around and drawing around of our screen. Okay, let's have a look and see how that looks. Okay, there's the purple warnings coming up for the pragma and Okay, there's our ball and we can see we're just drawing lines all over the screen. Okay, what we need to do is um, we need to clear our screen. Obviously, once we've drawn our ball, uh, we need to then clear it at some point. Now, clearing the whole screen on the GBA uh, pixel by pixel with the plotter we've got is going to take forever in GBA time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a function called clear ball and it's just going to draw a black rectangle where the ball currently is. So we can use this to just clear the area of the screen that the ball occupies. So then we'll have the, the situation of our update loop will then come through and it will be, okay, start the loop, clear the ball, move the ball, draw the ball. So now just prior to move ball, we're going to put in a call to that clear function. So we're going to call clear and ball. And we'll pass a pointer to the ball in there. Okay, so running that code, we should now see our ball bouncing around the screen as we clear it, move it, and then draw it repeatedly. All right, and that's not what anybody expected to see. So, okay, so what's happening here is that we've got our screen, okay? And let's say we're drawing our screen. Our screen's gonna start drawing from position zero, zero up here in this upper corner. And it's gonna draw down to here in our bottom corner, okay? So 240 by 160 pixels later is gonna be here. Now, the way our screen starts drawing is it draws from this point and it progresses in this direction until it gets to here. And that's the first row of pixels. When it gets to here, we have something that's called or referred to as a H blank or a horizontal blank. And that's when the, on cathode ray tubes and the old TVs, it used to turn the electron scope off and it used to position it back over to here to begin redrawing that second row of pixels. And it would do this for 160 lines. For every uh, line that we have, it would do this. And then when we get down to here, we have what's called the V blank or the vertical blank. Okay, and this is the point when we can swap our screen buffers, etc. We've finished drawing our screen, um, and you'll see this on modern hardware systems still as well. And this is where it turns the electron microscope off on the old CRTs, or now it just repositions itself to draw from here all the way back up to our starting point to then start drawing the next frame. <coughs> what we're seeing on the GBA at the moment with drawing the ball is instead of drawing it every single frame or once per frame, we're drawing it and then perhaps we're going through and we're drawing our code again. Um, and it won't be as drastic a movement as this. We're probably, you know, we're drawing in between if uh, say that we've got this ball progressing down this direction here. So what's happening is we're moving the ball and redrawing it and we're doing this before we hit the refresh rate of the screen. So either we're going faster than the refresh rate of the screen 
or we're going a little slower and we're getting this shadowing happening or where we're, we're, we're missing bits out and it seems to be drawing in a pattern of bars, okay, like this instead. So we've got gaps in the middle. So what's happening is our timing's not right. And what we need to do is we need to set our timing up so that when we reach a vertical blank, this is when, and this sort of takes some time to get back up to here, during that period of time when it's recalibrating itself to start drawing from the top again, is when we'll run and we'll execute our code and tell our code to do all the drawing. So that's what we're going to set up now. All right, so back in our code, we'll just shrink down the code we've got for the ball, hide that by the pragma. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a vsync function. So first we'll need to grab the register for the vcounter. And if you look at GBA tech, that's going to tell us the address of this register and what type we need to define this register as. So GBA tech tells us that this is going to be a volatile as it gets changed outside of our code, unsigned 16, and it lives at memory address 04000006. That's the memory address for the vcount. And all that does is it's a register that just keeps track of what horizontal scan line that the GBA is up to drawing. So if you ask what this register value is, it will give you a value between zero and 160, just to say I am, well, zero and slightly over 160, but it's gonna tell you whereabouts it is into drawing the screen. So we can say, hey, if this VCAN register is greater than or equal to the screen height, let's just spin our wheels. Now this will be if we call this whilst we're still in a, a V blank, uh, which could happen, we're just gonna sit here a little bit longer. And then once it falls out of that while loop, it's gonna go to the second while loop for whilst where our VCAN value is less than the screen height, Okay, so that means that we're actively drawing the screen now. We don't want to do any of our code. So we're just going to add it in here inside our while loop. We'll call vsync. And when it hits that, it's going to spin its wheels until the register for vcount says, hey, I'm now at greater than 160. Okay, so we can see that. Now we've got our ball drawing and bouncing off the bottom and top and disappearing off the side of the screen as expected, which is brilliant. Okay, so that's the ball done. Right, after the ball for Pong comes the paddles. So we're gonna, okay, pragma define region and we'll define Pong underscore paddle. Okay, and we'll close off that pragma region as well again. And then we'll define our paddle struct. So type def struct, again, this is me slightly going against some of the fundamental rules of, I guess, C if you're really strict on this. We'll type define a struct, call it paddle. It'll take an X and a Y for position and it's gonna take a width and a height. And it's gonna take an unsigned 16 as well for a color. So that's our paddle object, okay? And we'll just finish off that type def by calling it paddle down there. Okay, so now we're gonna have a function to initialize our paddle. Now our paddle doesn't start in a random direction like our ball, our paddle starts on either side of the screen as we're making pong. So we'll take a point to our paddle and we'll give it an X and a Y value. We'll give it a width and a height. Um, yeah, we'll pass in width and height. And then we'll give it a color value as well. And all we're gonna go through in this function is we're just gonna go through and we're gonna set that paddle pointer that's passed in. We're just gonna set its data to the data that was passed in. So we're just keeping this all nice and neat in one location where we set our paddle data. So yep, x is x, y is y, uh, width is width, and height is height, and the color will be the color. So that's our paddle setup, and our paddle is going to be a lot easier to set up than our ball one, because we don't have to call start paddle or worry about giving it a direction just yet. Okay, so we've defined our paddle. Next, we're gonna need a function to move our paddle. Um, yeah, we'll add this in. Um, and what we're gonna do is we'll call draw rec. That's, no, we need to call this draw. Draw paddle. We're gonna draw our paddle. We'll move, move paddle, that, that's the next lesson. 
So we'll call draw rect and we're going to call draw rect of the paddle's x position and its y position and then we'll pass through its width, its height and the color. And that'll be drawing our paddle. And like with our ball, instead of clearing the whole screen, which was you know far too many pixels, we'll just clear the area we've drawn for our paddle. So we're going to kind of turn it on or off. So we've got a draw paddle function. That's that done, same as the balls draw function. And then we're going to just copy it and we'll just change it to clear paddle. So we paste it back in, change draw to clear. Still takes a pointer to a paddle. Still calls draw rect with the paddle's x and y position. The color that goes in, we're just going to set that to black, um, which is just the background color that we've got. If you've changed the background color um, of the GBA, then you want to change that color there instead. Okay, so we've got our paddle uh, drawing clearing and we're just going to add that in. We'll create a paddle object or just a paddle, P1 we'll call it that. And we'll initialize it. We'll pass through a pointer to where P1 is and we'll pass through a position. Let's just stick it at 10 and 60. Seems like a good location, 10 pixels in and 60 pixels down. We'll give it a width of eight, a height of 40 and we'll give it a color of, what are we gonna do, blue. Okay, so we'll have a blue paddle to start with. Okay, so after V-Sync and after clear the ball, we'll clear the paddle. So we'll call clear paddle and we'll pass a pointer to that paddle object P1 in. Cool, and then after we've moved the ball, uh, we'll just do all our drawing code together. We'll call draw paddle. Pass for a pointer to the paddle. Okay, build and run and we should see a paddle being drawn in our emulator. Okay, and here we go. Ooh, break point, okay. There we go. There's our paddle and our ball bouncing around. Great, let's go ahead and we'll stick in the player two paddle so we can copy this initialization code, paste it in, change P1 to P2, and we'll change the position to be uh, what's it going to be? Screen width minus, uh, yep, 10. So it's 10 away from the other end of the screen. Yep, 60 is a good height. 8 and 40 is the same. Change our color so we're going to be red. Make it obvious that we're different. And we'll call, oh, hang on. Nope, we'll change that. That's P2. Okay, cool. So we'll call clear paddle with P2. So we'll just draw that away so we don't need to draw that anymore. Uh, whoop, bracket and then down here we'll call draw paddle and we'll pass through a pointer to p2 again and that should get it drawing our paddle okay so let's build that run that see how this goes okay it's built through and it's going to pop up and start running anytime now oh break point okay and there's no paddle Okay, let's just double check our logic to see what's happening here. Okay, we're calling draw paddle on P2. Let's just turn off clearing and see what happens if we turn off clearing. And we'll run that again. And break point. Okay, F5 to keep going. And there's our paddle. So it is definitely drawing our paddle, but why weren't we seeing it before when we called clear? Right, this is kind of showing some of the limitations of the refresh rate and also the way that we're drawing pixels. Um, what we can do is we'll, we'll just, we'll draw extra stuff, okay? Because drawing the two paddles the way we're drawing them before wasn't rendering all of them. And we're just gonna draw some extra stuff, okay? Uh, what was happening with the previous draw was we were hitting a really sort of lucky synchronization, which is by the time vSync had finished, we were still in our drawing code. And um, so vSync had finished and then we call clear again and we clear off that second paddle just before we draw it. So the problem that we've got with the GBA is it's not really designed to draw bitmap uh, rendering the way we're doing right now. So it's, it's great for tiled rendering. It's fantastic for that. It'll eat that up all day. It just, it's not very good at this plotting individual pixels. It seems to just take far too long with the way that we're doing it right now to get these. And we can see that here, okay? We can see that it's flickering. 
And yes, we are running it with all optimizations turned off in this debug mode as well. So we could change some compiler options to get it to run a little bit better. But by drawing those couple of extra lines, we'll see that, okay, we can see what's going on and it will run for now. But we're kind of getting to a limitation of where we're at. So that's today's tutorial to this stage. Um, after this, we'll carry on and we'll look at implementing. The next step is input so we can get our paddles moving around and we'll go through input in the next one of these tutorial videos that I upload. Uh, thanks, I hope you've enjoyed watching these. I'm enjoying making them, so I'll keep doing that. Thanks for tuning in and subscribing uh, so you get more of these videos. Um, so yeah, I hope you've had a good time and I'll catch you with the next video. Cheers.